Today I'm going to be breaking down the different types of Air Jordan 1. Not the colorways, but the types. For example, we have a low top, we have a mid top, we have a high top. I'm going to break it down for you. There's almost 20 different types of Jordan 1s, and then obviously hundreds of colorways. But we'll get into that in today's video. Welcome back to the channel. What's up with you guys? How you doing? How you been? If you did not know by now, my name is DJ and this is... The DNA Show. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the family. Join the squad. You already know what to do, man. Hit that like button because you already know that helps the algorithm oh so much. Get this question a lot and people don't understand. Why does my retro have a Jumpman on it and not have a Nike Air on the tag? Or why does the back look like this? Or why is there a difference in price between these two shoes if they look so similar? I'm going to start with the low tops and then we're going to work our way to the mids and then we'll go to the highs and then we'll go to the extra highs. Y'all don't even know there is extra highs huh crazy so first up is the air jordan one low now this one right here a lot of people think it is the same as the og low but it is a lot different and i'm gonna show you a prime example for you to tell is looking at the back of the shoe if you look at the back right here we have the og low cut right here we have the retro low cut right here so if you can see this tab right here that comes around and then it just regular swoosh comes back like this that's a huge difference between the two shoes. Also, the OG cut is a little bit more narrow around the midfoot, and then the tongue and everything is a lot different here on the OG cut as well. You got a Nike Air on the tongue, and then you got a Jumpman on the tongue right here. So those are some big giveaways between the two shoes when it comes to an Air Jordan 1 low or an Air Jordan 1 OG low. Similar to the OG low cut, we have an Air Jordan 1 Nike SB. Now, if you look at the tag of that shoe, it's gonna have the Nike SB branding on the tag, but then the back of the foot around the heel is gonna have that OG cut style. And last up for the low tops, we have the Air Jordan 1 low fat. Now this is a part of the fat series, which is honestly kind of funny because I think it's more to like a SB style because they made it really, really padded around the ankle area or the lower ankle area, whatever you wanna consider that. And it's called the fat one low. But it's interesting because you would think that the SB would be like that style. Also, in this video, I won't be mentioning any of the women's cuts when it comes to the lows, mids, or highs. I can make a separate video for that because there's so many different styles when it comes to the women's as well. So if you want to see a video on the women's cuts, drop a comment down below and I'll try to get that one put out for you guys. Now let's take it to the mids. So when it comes to the mid or the three quarters Air Jordan 1, a lot of people like to call it one, a lot of people like to call it the other. But if you look at this one right here, this is probably one of my favorite mid colorways of all time. There were a lot of Jordan 1 mids that came out in that early 2000s era to the 2010 era in that 10 year period and they were cut just a little bit different than the newer mids that have released over the past maybe five to seven years that we have been seeing releasing to the public. So they are a Jordan 1 mid and then the different materials and the color patterns and all those different things. But at the end of the day, they still fall in that category as the Air Jordan 1 mid. Now, if you ever notice, there's never really like a OG cut when it comes to the mid. It's mainly the high and the low. So you really just got your retro Air Jordan 1 mid or you have your alpha Air Jordan 1 mid. This one right here, a lot of people get this one confused saying, oh, that's like the Chicago one. But it's really not. It is a lot more comfortable, but at the same time, the materials on the upper and then the outsole, you can clearly see the difference between the OG, the Alpha, and then the Retro OG. So going to the Air Jordan 1 in the OG cut, OG high style, this is the one that everybody loves. This is probably one of the most coveted, one of the most iconic sneakers out there, and I completely understand why. People want a representation of the OG as much as possible. That's why the OG High Air Jordan 1 with the Nike Air on the tongue typically sells for a lot more money unless the other one is just a crazy dope colorway and it's more rare than what you could get when it comes to an OG cut style. One big thing that a lot of people get mixed up is this right here, the Air Jordan 1 Retro High. You know a lot of these iconic colorways and I'm not mad at them. I have some of them in my collection and I love some of these colorways, but there's a huge difference between the two. A great example for the Retro Highs, as you can see right here, you have the Jumpman here on the tongue, Jumpman here on the back. This is not considered an OG high. That's the biggest difference when it comes to these two. Yes, it's a high top Air Jordan 1, 
but it's a retro, not a OG high. And those two letters, OG, is literally what's gonna change the value. And then, well, I can't say it's gonna change the value, but most of the time it does. But it's gonna definitely change the look of the shoe. Now let's take it to the Air Jordan 1 OG high. You see the difference, the Nike Air here on the tongue, compared to the Jumpman, like on the retros. And then again, no Jumpman here on the back. And then you got your classic Nike Brandon OG cut high style, everything like that. So this is the shoe, not, I mean, I'm some people, I, I feel like most people like this colorway in particular, but when it comes to the OG High, this model, this style, is the style that a lot of people like. Now there are differences when it comes to eras, when it comes to the cuts of the materials and everything like that, and how it's just slightly shaped a little bit different. These are both Air Jordan 1 OG High Retros. Now you can see there is a little bit difference in the toe, different things like that. Obviously this one isn't laced up but there are some differences between the eras. So now we know that this one came out a little bit longer ago, and then this one is more recent over the past five years, and that's just a little bit difference when it comes to eras, but at the same time, both of these are gonna hold their value because they're considered OG highs. Now also with the retro OG high, we have seen over the past couple years especially, a lot, and when I say a lot, a lot of collaborations, and a lot of dope, crazy colorways, similar to the DR1. That's a retro OG high. And then you got examples like this, the backward swoosh, everything like that. But it's a retro OG high collaboration with Travis Scott. And the biggest thing right here, Nike Air here on the tongue. Even when you look at shoes like the Union, as you can see, Nike Air here on the tongue. Off-White, Air Jordan 1, OG High, Nike Air on the tongue, Nike Air on the tongue. Yes, they moved it to a different spot, but it still has that Nike Air on the tongue. Now, I think when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 High, I think the SB series is something super dope because it is very similar and the quality is there when it comes to matching that OG High style. All they're really doing to me is just switching that SB right there on the top, as you can see it instead of saying Nike Air. But overall, Definitely similar shoe, but that's a big difference when it comes to availability, price, value, you know, just all these other factors. Now let's take it to the AJKO. Now this one right here, there are two different variations of this sneaker. This one has your classic Air Jordan 1 bottom on it. This was the first retro that we saw 10 years ago, and then we saw retros after that that switched up the bottom. Me personally, I'm not a fan of the retros with a different bottom on them, but I just personally like this one. That's a preference thing, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Drop a comment down below and let me know which style you like more. A big thing that sticks out with the shoe like this is the AJKO right here on the Wings logo. And probably one of the coolest things that have started a major trend is the flaps right here on the sides. Now a lot of people say, all the flaps came from the off-white, all the flaps came from the off-white. This came first. This was an OG style from way back in the day. And these flaps right here, super dope addition to the shoe. Now we see it coming on the off-white sneaker or the rookie of the year or a different sneaker like that or even like the Zoom Air Jordan 1. Now, not every Zoom Zoom has the flaps on the side, but it's based on the Zoom technology on the insole of the foot. Some people love it, some people hate it. Drop a comment down below and let me know if you like any of the Zoom Air Jordan 1s. Now this next one is very controversial and that is the Air Jordan 1 Rare Air. Now you can see the difference, the biggest difference to me is the shape a little bit, but the Air Jordan on the side of the foot, you don't have your Wings logo anymore. And a lot of people get that confused thinking that they bought one shoe, but it's actually that shoe. And they're like, oh, well, it's like the same thing. Is this the Game Royal or is it not? On the heel of this foot, you have your Nike Air branding that you would find on the tongue stitched on the back of the foot. I'm not opposed to models like this one in particular. Just me personally, I like more of the OG cut style. I haven't picked up a pair of Rare Air Air Jordan 1s yet, but maybe I might, maybe one day. I haven't found a colorway that I'm like, oh yeah, I need to have those over the other one that came out. So for me personally, I don't own any pairs, but if somebody does own them, I'm not bashing on them. I love them, I respect them, I think they're still dope. They're just different than the ones that we consider the OG cut style. Also, we cannot forget to mention the Flyknit Air Jordan 1. The entire upper of the sneaker is fly knit. The insole and the midsole, it's just constructed a little bit different. And I'm telling you right now, they are way more comfortable than the OG high. Next up is the Air Jordan 1 
85. Now we have seen a couple releases of this model. We haven't seen too many hit the public yet. I'm not exactly sure what Jordan Brand's gonna do, but I hope they don't flood the market with this style because they're trying to replicate the OG style as much as possible. That's why they call it the 85. And then the more of a narrow cut with a little bit different on the outsole and different things like that. You can clearly see the difference between this and this right here. As you can see, that one's a lot more narrow and a little bit different than that OG high that a lot of people have been looking for. But this shoe right here does hold its value and I think it will continue to rise. Next up is a sleeper and that is the Air Jordan 1 strap. I'm not mad at this style, just me personally. I don't own any pairs in my collection. I might low key just have to go out and grab one just cause. For example, you have a crazy version like this. That tongue is crazy, bro. I don't even know if I could do that one. Could you rock those? Drop a comment and let me know. All right, now let's look at the Air Jordan 1 Extra High. So you can see right here, it almost looks like the Retro High, but if you look at that back end around that collar meat right there, it's just a little bit taller than normal. I don't own any pairs of Extra High Air Jordan 1s, I'm not mad at them, I just don't think they're for me. And last on the list is the Air Jordan 1.5. Now you guys know there was a sample from way back in the day that Jordan had, and then we saw the retro come out to the public. A lot of people weren't really sure if they really liked it or not, but the Air Jordan 1.5 is an option. Me personally, I would like to get a pair in my collection. I'm not going crazy to have them, but if they do come my way and I find a size 13 for a good deal, I would probably pick them up just for nostalgia reasons. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope I was able to help you see the difference between the models, not just the colorways, but the reasons why people like certain shoes over other shoes. And now you understand the Nike Air and the other factors behind the shoes with the Jumpman, different things like that with the cuts, the Jordan logo on the side, you name it. Another big thing, a lot of people be bashing on Air Jordan 1 mids, and that's funny as hell to me, because I remember back in the early 2000s time, when you had Father's Days, Olympics, all these other, you know, BMP, different dope colorways that was dropping around that era, People was going crazy. People was loving it. And then we got all the new sneakerheads that came into the game now. Oh, Jordan 1 mids is weak. And I'm like, come on, bro. Really? Really? And all the OG heads is like, oh, them is dope. I remember those. Especially when I pull out something like this, I always get some appreciation from people. Something like this. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different good options. All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, buy what you like. And if you want to get mids, cop mids. If you want to buy the alphas, cop the alphas. I I wouldn't buy the alphas, but <laughs> you can do it if you want to. All right, you guys, my name is DJ. I'm signing out. I got to go. I'm gone. Peace.